Let's preview! Sunday, 1.30 and Liverpool are at home to Southampton. A game I'm not much looking forward to, considering, let's consider the record that we've had recently against Southampton. I think we've drawn two and lost one, or something like that. It might even have been lost two and drawn one. I'm not entirely sure, but we've been shut out by Southampton pretty handily, let's put it that way. And I'm not entirely looking forward to the game, just because Southampton are a team that if they, if they are on it, they can really, really turn it on. And they are at a point now where they might actually either need to be on it. They're ninth in the table. They can't really go any... They can't go further than... Let's have a look. I don't think they can go further than eight. They've got five games left to play, which would give them... If they win all of them, 43... No, sorry. 44, 47, 50, um, 53, 56. So... 56 points, it wouldn't even get them into 7th because Everton are already on 58. So they can only go up to 8th place anyway. So what that means is, are Southampton on their holidays or not? Um, or are they actually going to come into this game and do what they did to us in the cup games? And stuff like that as well. They shut us out, they beat us, they knocked us out the cup. For some reason, I think, from the start I saw, of the games that we played against Southampton with Jurgen Klopp, he's not actually won any of them. He's drawn... I, he's, I'm pretty sure it's drawn one and lost two, but I'm, I'm seriously not sure. I can't remember where I read it, so yeah, that's by the by. Let's take a look at the last six games for each team. Now, Southampton have, they've, let's have a look, they've won two, lost two, and drew two. Now, the ones that they lost were against Man City and Chelsea. They lost handily against City, losing 3-0, and they lost against Chelsea, 4-2. They drew against Hull, 0-0. That's not that great when you consider... Uh, that Hull are just above the relegation zone by two points, 17th place. And they also drew against Bournemouth, which Bournemouth are one of those. Like Bournemouth, are literally, they're level on points with Southampton. So, I mean, that kind of tells you where Bournemouth are in terms of they've gone up. But Southampton have kind of dropped away a little bit. I think their maximum points total that they've ever had is 63, and they're going to fall quite short of that this year, even if they won all of their games, which I'm hoping they don't. They can win all four of the rest of them. Just don't win this one, please. Please. We need to win. We need to win. Now, one thing that I'm looking at with Liverpool, and I'm looking at our last six games as well, in that we've won four, drawn one, and lost one. Now, obviously, the loss was the Crystal Palace game. Um, the draw was against Bournemouth, 2-2. Two -two. But, but in between all of those, I say in between, the other games that we've won, 3-1 against Everton, 2-1 against Stoke, 1-0 against West Brom, and 1-0 against Watford. Now, the one thing that worries me with Liverpool is that we are not scoring a lot of goals. Don't get me wrong. Emre Chan, you pull out stuff like that, or any of the players, you pull out anything like that. Yeah, that's great, that's fine, I'm happy to win a 1-0. But can we not have a heart attack every single time that we play a game? I do not want to be going into a game, 45th minute or 40th minute, whatever, just before half-time, score a goal, 1-0, great. And then the next 45 minutes is heart attack central, because it's just a lot to deal with, okay? It's at this very crucial point in the t in, in um in the season. We've got Man United and Man City crawling behind us. Arsenal, don't think you're going to make it. Sorry, you've got five games to play. We've only got three to play, but I just don't think Arsenal are going to make it. I just don't think they've got the fight. The way that they lost against Tottenham, that's a derby. You win your derbies. You go in there with passion, and it didn't happen. We go into our derbies. I think we've won 1-0 against Everton and 3-1 against Everton as well. As Well, yeah, I've got that one on the screen. Southampton are a difficult team. They've been difficult for us. We have these teams that we play. West Ham are one of them. Crystal Palace are one of them. Southampton have been one of them. That where we we struggle. We really, really struggle. Any team that's been managed by Tony Pulis, we've struggled against those. We've done well against them this season. But even so, I just don't understand what it is where we've got some of these teams that we can blow away. And we've got other teams that we will we're going to lose to. Or get held to a draw. Of the games that we've got left, out of the three that we have left, I would rather draw this one and win the other two, if that's how we're going to do it. I would love to obviously win all three of them. I really would. And I think we could do it. There's no reason why we couldn't. We've got the attacking, uh, we've got the attacking force to be able to do it. I just, yes, we are missing Sadio Mane unbelievably. We're missing him so, so much. But somehow, we're still third in the table without him. We haven't had the best record. We haven't had the best wins you know, the best wins, we've had some terrible losses, had some terrible draws as well, ones that we should have been winning. But we can do we can do this against the last three teams. I believe that we can do it. 
you know, West Ham and then Middlesbrough as well afterwards. They're going to be tough games, no no doubt. If this ends up going down to the last game of the season as well, I I hope to God I've still got hair. You know, I love I love having long hair. It's great. I don't want to lose that due to this. I will happily lose it if we get in the Champions League, though. That's fine. That's not a problem. Um, it's such an important game. I keep saying that because I can't reiterate it enough. Every single game now, these last three games, are so damn important for, for Liverpool and the future for next year. Targets, transfer targets, achievements this year as well. I think, you know, with us not getting a trophy so far under Klopp, top four is the best that we can hope for. It's not a trophy, but it's the best that we can hope for right now. Is it an achievement? It is a little bit. It's not the bit, but it's not the greatest achievement of all time, but it is a little bit of an achievement because it gives us a platform with which that we could jump off for next year, hopefully, and we can build, hopefully, a better squad. Weed out some of the players that haven't been doing it this year, but reinforce every single position, which, in my opinion, is something that you do have to do. You have to... You know, can't get into the situation like we had this year. Mane goes out and we lose all of our games in January pretty much, apart from one. Can't have that. You can't have that happen. Shouldn't be happening. Not at this level as well. Not as not as not as Liverpool, a team that's wanting to solidify themselves in the top four. You need to have replacement players for each of them. Divock Origi could be a good striker. We need somebody else in. The rumours of Lacazette, I'm gonna go over transfer rumours and stuff like that in the next couple of weeks. But you need another striker. You need someone who's going to give you another option. Daniel Sturridge. Probably not going to be there next year, I don't think. You've got to have different options. How about a left winger? Coutinho's been doing well when he's been put out there. But how about an actual left winger if you're going to play three across the front? You could then drop him back a little bit. I don't know. But I think that we need to have so many more options. Goalkeeper, especially. I don't care what Klopp says. Love Klopp. I would hope he knows it, but he probably doesn't. Love the guy. But we need a better goalkeeper for damn sure. minule has been doing okay. He's been doing well. But I don't want to be having to go into next season going, Mignolet is our number one. No way. No way. Can't accept that. I can't accept that. Anyway, on to this game. Prediction-wise and such like that. It's good to see Sturridge is apparently only going to be available from the bench. They're managing his fitness, according to a Sky Sports article. Um, Lallana is going to be fit to play and Coutinho could be fit to play as well, which is very, very good. I was so, so happy that Coutinho only had a dead leg. I really was. Because if that had been a worse injury and I'm, when he, got, he had to go off from 13 minutes against Watford, I was fearing the worst. You know, having Mane out is ridiculous. Having Coutinho out at the same time, it just brought memories back of like when we had Gerard and Torres out injured. For ah, uh, oh, that was awful, and I was just, I just didn't want that to happen. So I hope that he can somehow stay fit. Um, and if you can start with that team against Southampton, we should be able to do. We should be able to, get, you know, have a good go at their defence. We've got to test them. We've got to do what we haven't been doing in recent games in that we've been passing it around that that around the box so, so much. You get it into nice attacking areas. Just have a shot, for Christ's sake. Just have a shot. If Emre Chan is anyone to learn from, just take the shot, okay? Just take the shot. You never know what can happen. That was a beautiful goal, and I don't expect anything like that to be recreated between now, maybe not even next year, but just have a go. Because we get in good attacking positions. Firmino gets in good attacking positions and doesn't shoot at the right times, in my opinion. I just wish that we would take a couple more opportunities instead of trying to pass it and pass it and pass it, 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 pass it. Everything that people slag off Arsenal for doing. They pass it and they pass it and they pass it and sideways, 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 back, sideways, sideways, cross, sideways, back, side. You know, it doesn't just... What, have a look at some videos that you did at the start of the season. What How we were playing then. And try and recreate a little bit of that. Because at the end of the day, yes, we're missing Mane. But we're only missing Mane. We're missing Henderson as well. His range of passing. That is probably something that's missing. But that's not something that can't be recreated in midfield by the likes of Wijnaldum, Emre Chan, Adam Lallana. They've certainly got their, they've got their own tools as well. We're not... We're not, like, in Man United's position right now where we're missing, like, five, four, you know, uh, first-team starters and very key players. 
we're not missing that. We've got pretty much the exact same team that we've had all throughout the season, just without Mane and Henderson. Now, and why they they are key important cogs in our team, the rest of the team has still got a job to do. And it, if it means you play a different way, fine, that's great. But that doesn't mean that you just you don't just 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 do something a little bit different, for Christ's sake. Just try taking some opportunities. Try taking some initiative. And actually test the goalkeeper a lot more than we have been lately. And that's the same goes for Origi. Because if Origi's going to be starting in this game ahead of Sturridge... And don't get me wrong, Sturridge only came on as a sub against Watford, but he looked sharp. He had good movement. And I like him from the bench from that position. But if Origi's not doing it in the first 45, off for the next 45. Because... I like the kid. I think that he's going to be a good player eventually. But he's got a lot of learning to do and he's got a lot of confidence to build up as well. Three games left of the season and we need to be scoring a lot more goals. Because the last thing I ever want to go to, and I've said this before, the last thing I want Champions League qualification to go down to is goal difference. Liverpool were on 29, 29 goal difference. Man City on 28, Man United on 26. It's too close. It's too close. When you look at Tottenham and Chelsea, Tottenham 49... Chelsea on 43, ridiculous, ridiculous. We've got a long way to go. It looks like it's only three games, but it's still going to be long as hell. These next three games are going to feel like an absolute age. Even watching them, it's going to feel like hell. I think Liverpool will win this game. I don't. I think Southampton, their recent performances, are going to go against them a little bit. We're at home. We have to use the advantage of being at home. Because then we go to the London Stadium and then we're back at home for Middlesbrough. We have to go balls out, balls to the walls, all game. And I'm not saying I want to see Lovren and Matip up front. 90, you know, I don't want to see them up front anywhere in this game. I, at all, at all. Let's just, let's keep our heads. Let's be organised, but let's be clinical. Let's be clinical like we were earlier in the season. Take our opportunities, grab this game by the scruff of the neck and show them who they're dealing with. They're dealing with top four contenders. We need to show them who we are, who we can be. And I think that we can do it. I definitely think we can do it. I'm going to go for a 2-0. I think we're actually going to score two goals. Whew, I'm putting it out there. We haven't scored two goals since Stoke. <laughs> okay? But I think we can do it. We've only scored three goals in our last three games, but we can do it this time. I definitely believe we can do it. 2-0 is what I'm going for. Let me know what you think, Southampton fans and Liverpool fans, in the comments below. I'm hoping it's not going to be Heart Attack Central, but if we win, I'll take it. It's fine. Don't worry about it. I'll add a couple of years. You take a couple of years off my life. It's not a problem. Let's go forth. Let's have fun. Let's hope it's a good one, guys. Thank you ever so much for watching. Like the video. Subscribe if you're new around here. Get your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks for watching again, as always, and I'll catch you later.